YouTube frogs, welcome back to another complete guide, this time covering everything you need to know about our Mora addicted business magnate, Dory. We'll be covering her talent design, playstyle nuances and electro application, optimal weapons and artifacts, constellations, team comps, and a gameplay showcase. Footage in this video was tested and recorded on the media server, which allows me to check out new characters slightly before their actual launch. So let's begin. Our newest Electro 4 star released with Sumeru, Dori is a general Electro support. Relying on her elemental skill for consistent energy and her elemental burst for HP based healing, flat energy return, and electro damage over time. She doesn't have any particular support synergies with elemental mastery, and her general build path greatly reminds me of Diona, focused primarily on HP bulkiness, burst uptime, and Favonius uptime. Her strength comes from having a moderately energy friendly kit that supports her high cost burst to provide greatest uptime to her utility. Normal attack, charge attack. Probably one of the most unique Claymore animations. Dory herself sits comfortably on top of her electro slime while it does all the hacking and slashing for her. Unfortunately, there's not much immediate use unless you manage to C6 her. Elemental skill, Dory's unique ability, her lamp cannon, fires an initial electro shot that deals single target electro damage and generates two electro orbs, which then breaks off into two smaller homing shots. These shots seem to follow normal internal cooldown rules at three hits or two and a half seconds per application. Notice that the initial shot does not need to hit an enemy to break into its smaller pieces. Her multiplier values are nothing too amazing, to a point where I don't find the need to even level it up. At level 1, she does a maximum of 210.5% damage with 2 service round damage, which increases to up to 294.6% at level 6. Personally for me, this ability serves as an energy generation ability only. In fact, you may or may not have noticed that during her elemental skill, her burst energy increased a little before her, the electro orbs came back to her. So, this is her Ascension 4 passive, Compound Interest. When her lamp cannon shot hits enemies, Dory restores 5 flat energy per 100% recharge that she has. This only procs once for her entire ability up to the 3 shots, and a maximum of 15 energy when it does. So that means 100% recharge grants her 5, 200% grants her 10, and 300% recharge grants the max of 15 flat energy. Since her elemental skill can be activated at least twice per burst rotation at a 9 second cooldown, on average you can expect 10 to 20 flat energy return from that passive. This brings us to her elemental burst, Alcazarzare's exactitude. I am never saying that again. Dory throws her lamp forward, summoning the Ginny, which connects to the active character and provides various effects. So first, it restores HP based on Dory's max HP once every 2 seconds. Flat energy is also returned at the same interval as HP restoration once every 2 seconds. And if the connection is intercepted by an enemy in between, they are dealt electro damage once every 0.4 seconds. The connection range of this ability is fairly decent, but does require movement to guarantee that the electro damage ticks on enemies. Notice also that the electro application seems to be time based. It's about two and a half to three seconds per application. If we are counting the exact number of hits, it's about eight hits in that duration, which is extremely high and unfortunately fairly low in terms of application. With a 12 second duration and a 20 second cooldown, expect about four to five procs of this electro application. The AD energy cost is pretty high, but I have not noticed any particular uptime issues due to her kit granting a bunch of flat energy, and coupled with utility weapons, her own uptime is not that bad. Her healing is HP scaling, and her raw multipliers are attack scaling and extremely low, incentivizing her kit to be used as pure utility and not care about her personal damage. And while the active character is connected to the Ginny, her Ascension 1 passive, an eye for gold, decreases her elemental skill cooldown by 1 second if an electro related reaction is procced. It's only available once every 3 seconds, so expect on average 2 or so procs per her burst. Now, talent priority is very simplistic. We only care about her utility, and that lies only with her elemental burst. Both the healing and the energy generation is increased per level. The normal attack and elemental skill can be left at level 1, or if you want to dump some resources in elemental skill, that's fine. I currently have her at 116. Now for some playstyle nuances regarding Dory. At 200% recharge and Favonius Greatsword, burst uptime is usually never an issue in solo situations. 180% recharge and Sacrificial Sword achieves relatively the same thing, just lower particle generation for the team and more for herself. Her burst connection is pretty unreliable when it comes to making contact with the enemy to deal electro damage though. It's only really applicable for melee range characters, and even so, enemy movement can be fairly sporadic and easily move out of the limited range. 
For this reason, I only think about maintaining connection to the active character for healing and the energy battery. For general rotations, lead with elemental skill into elemental burst and then swap to main DPS. After the main DPS rotation is over, which is usually 6 to 10 seconds, Dory's elemental skill should be back up again. Our 5 Favonius procs work excellent in these situations, as the time frame between each proc is at least 6 seconds. So for most autopilot situations, you'll be able to squeeze in 2 elemental skills per burst. If you're playing a heavy quick swap composition with easy to proc electro reactions, she can squeeze in three utilizing her A1 passive. Constellations. So, for Dory, her constellations mainly focus on healing quality of life for the general team at the later stages. Nothing particularly design changing until Constellation 6, where she gains a unique infusion that further benefits healing. Constellation 1. Her lamp cannon fires one additional shot from three to four total. Slight improvement to her electro application. Constellation 2, her elemental burst gains a 50% attack multiplier value damage proc every 2 seconds if it heals. This damage is quite insignificant and will barely be noticeable. Constellation 3 and Constellation 5, plus 3 levels to her burst at C3 and elemental skill at C5. Elemental burst at the earlier stage means greater healing and energy refund at C3. Constellation 4, the active character, not necessarily Dory, gains 50% incoming healing bonus when under 50% HP and or 30% recharge when under 50% total energy when connected to the Ginny. These are separate buffs and they can both occur at the same time to the active character. Constellation 6, Dory gains 3 seconds of electro infusion when she shoots her lamp cannon. During this period, her normal attack heals all party members for 4% of her max HP. This constellation is primarily for the AoE healing since her burst is single target for the active character. 4% max HP for a 25,000 HP Dory is 1,000 HP. So in general, her most valuable constellation, in my opinion, comes at constellation 4 when your teammates can gain an energy recharge buff and a healing bonus buff. Alright, let's build her up. Optimal weapon choices first. As a dedicated utility support with very minimal DPS output, I found that Doria works best with purely supportive weapons. DPS weapons and elemental mastery based weapons are basically useless for her, so I tend to prioritize energy recharge weapons and secondarily HP based weapons. This build path should remind you of a very similarly designed HP scaling character, Diona. So what energy recharge claymores are there? We first have Favonia's Greatsword, probably the easiest weapon to utilize for Dory, as her elemental skill can hit up to 3 times, each with a chance to proc Favonia's passive. Make sure that Favonia's procs activate before switching to other characters, as Favonia's does not proc off-field. For Dory, this may mean leaving her on-field for a second longer so that her lamp cannon shots connect and crit. With 55.9% or higher recharge secondary, building around Favonius can easily allow Dory to achieve a stable 200% recharge. Then we have Forest Regalia. So this is our newest Claymore craftable available with Sumeru's release. This weapon's utility provides a 60 elemental mastery leaf on the ground able to be picked up by party members. It also has identical energy recharge secondary to Sacrificial Greatsword, which maintains at half of Favonius' level or 27.9% at level 80. Using this weapon may pose beneficial if elemental mastery for a specific character is more valuable than Favonius' orb generation. And lastly, Sacrificial Greatsword. This weapon is optimized specifically for electro orb generation, allowing Dory to double lamp cannon every 16 seconds for 4 electro orbs instead of 2. However, since Dory's personal orb generation is on the lower side at those 2 orbs, you may find Favonius Greatsword to generally perform better. Available HP Claymore options. Well, you know that there's only one. The bell. For completion's sake, I am mentioning it because it does have 37.7% HP secondary. But dear lord, you guys know that the energy recharge weapons are way more valuable, and so this weapon is again going to be permanently on the bench. Artifacts. So, for Dory, unfortunately, there's not a perfect 4-piece supportive set that she can truly optimally utilize. 4-piece Tenacity doesn't have great uptime since Dory's Lamp Cannon is 9 second cooldown with no persistence. 4-piece Noblesse has a maximum of only a 60% uptime since Dory's burst duration is 12 seconds, but it goes on a 20 second cooldown. 4-piece Instructor is a viable but limited to only 4-star artifact options, meaning the artifact stats are capped at a much lower value. Of these three utility sets, I would gravitate towards Noblesse and Instructor 4-Piece. Then we have the Healing 4-Piece options, which I generally wouldn't recommend due to low value gain from her kit. Maiden's Beloved grants no significant benefits besides moderate healing increases. Ocean Hued Clam only lasts for 3 seconds of healing, which is extremely minimal for Dory since her burst healing ticks once per 2 seconds at low amounts. So this brings us to 2-Piece two 2-Piece two combinations. 
For all general utility and stat stick value, we have two piece tenacity and two piece emblem combo that will provide the most universal value for her kit. It's a generic 20% recharge and generic 20% HP buff that are universal improvements to her kit without reliance on specific uptime. The only downside to this two piece two piece combo is that there's zero gain for a teammate buff that tenacity, noblesse, or instructor would provide. Okay, now for main stat choices. Since we aren't focusing on her DPS or her reaction damage at all, we only care about two to three things. First, energy recharge, which I would aim for 200% plus because she has an 80 cost burst. Two, general HP or healing. Three, crit rate if you're running Favonius, that's optional. Now, depending on the weapon of choice, your energy recharge needs may vary and may determine whether or not you need an energy recharge timepiece, or you can strictly build bulk and rely on energy recharge substats. So these are my build recommendations for achieving desired stats. All of these builds, I would aim for 200% plus recharge. If you have no useful substats on your pieces, then energy recharge timepiece, HP goblet, and a crit rate mask if you're running Favonius, or an HP or healing bonus mask if you're running non-Favonius. That's like Regalia or Sacrificial. Energy recharge substats. Then you can remove the energy recharge timepiece and go HP timepiece, HP goblet, and then crit rate mask if you're running Favonius, or HP timepiece, HP goblet, and a healing bonus mask or an HP mask if you're running non-Favonius. Then we have energy recharge and crit rate substats. This is mostly for Favonius build. Then you can just run triple HP or a healing bonus mask. So in general, to summarize, prioritize high recharge first. This is for burst uptime. And then you go for crit rate if you're running Favonius, which is 35% minimum because she has three shots on her elemental skill or 50% or higher for comfort. And then HP percent for bulkiness and heal scaling on her burst and C6 if you get it to that stage. In my opinion, Dory does not scale well with any DPS options or elemental mastery options due to infrequency of her electro application and low general multipliers. My current Dory stats are sitting at HP, 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 since I don't have a healing bonus mask and running 4 Noblesse. Team Compositions As a dedicated healing electro support, Dory grants the most value to main DPSs who are rotationally on the field and can benefit from her consistent healing and flat energy gain. As long as they trigger some form of electro-related reaction, Dory is able to gain a minus one second cooldown decreases on her elemental skill, allowing her to spam it more frequently, up to three times per burst uptime. Now, because her burst cannot guarantee enemy contact, it's more valuable to think of it as a flat energy battery and a healing pod. Because of how her kit functions, I view her as an old school electro support, best in situations with mono electro or quicken, taser, and eula enabler. I find that Bloom related compositions not the greatest synergy since Dory is not the greatest reactor. So those compositions that we mentioned are very similar to those involving Cookie Shinobu and it should be no surprise since their use cases are very similar. For Mono Electro and Quicken team comps, both of these compositions would rely on Dory as the healing plus flat energy battery alongside either an Electro main DPS or a Dendro DPS. Units like Raiden Shogun, Kaching, Yaimiko fall under the Electro DPS while we currently just have Tignari as Dendro DPS. So for these compositions, Dory doesn't do anything specifically unique besides provide quick swap particles with elemental skill and maintain her burst uptime. Then we have standard taser compositions. So Dory rotates best with main DPSs who maintain a 6 to 9 second rotation for her elemental skill particle generation. Both Ionzel and Tartek can fall under this category and easily maintain movable distance to her burst due to their melee stances. And since both of them are main DPS builds, their builds typically do not heavily prioritize energy recharge, making Dory particle generation naturally assists the rotations. For Eula, Dory is interchangeable in the Eula Raiden Electro Healer plus X comp. The Electro Healer can be either Cookie or Dory, with Dory providing a greater energy battery to assist Eula's Hungry Burst. This can leave the X slot to be Zhongli or Offensive Double Crown like Rosaria. So in general, Dory's purpose in team compositions is strictly to maintain healing and energy with both her burst and elemental skill. Now onto a quick showcase. Here's a simple example of Ayato plus Dory and Eula plus Dory. I've limited their team compositions to showcase Dory's energy battery potential with the Favonius Greatsword. Both Eula and Ayato will have about 115% recharge. Note that both of them have 80 cost bursts alongside Dory. We'll be sparring with Masanori. Cue the music, Mr. Cope. Sweet! 
Sebastian. So, overall, Dory combines the consistency of healing with built-in energy generation to provide simple but effective supportive capabilities to the team. And with simplistic build paths that focus strictly on utility and bulk, her quick swap nature generates a healthy amount of energy for both herself and her teammates at a consistent rate. And that wraps up my general findings for Dory. Any additional findings or updates will be in the pinned comment. Whether you are summoning for Dory or waiting patiently for future characters, I bid thee the best of luck. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you next time. Take care.